we're going to look at permutations in this one. All right. So where this is when we have an arrangement of a set of objects in which the order of the objects is important. And that's what's called a permutation. So for example, how many ways can you arrange four people sitting on a bench? That's a permutation. Whereas how many ways can you group, can you choose a group of four from a class? That's not a permutation. So order matters. All right, that's the key here. So if you have n distinct items and r, dis r items are taken and arranged from there, then the number of permutations is, and it's written as n p r, and your n and your r are subscripts, which means that it's written smaller and lower. It's equal to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial, okay? So you're subtracting the number of things you choose from there, right? That's how many you need in your group. And then finding the factorial of it. So let's have a look at this example. So if you want to arrange three books in a display case and you have seven books to choose from, you can arrange the books in 210 ways. And the way we come up with that number, we've got seven permutation, seven P3, We've got seven factorial divided by seven minus three. So we wanted the three books. So this is how many different ways we can arrange them. All right, so seven times six times five times four factorial. If you've got four factorial in the denominator here, these cancel and you're left with seven times six times five, 210 ways. All right, so let's just have some practice with evaluating these permutations. So this is 6 factorial over 6 minus 4 in brackets factorial. So that's 6 factorial over 2 factorial, which is 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 factorial divided by 2 factorial. And we end up with, uh, this is 30, that's 12. So 30 times 12 is 360, okay? So there's 360 different ways. And now let's solve this equation here. So since we have NP2, we can write that using this setup. So I've got N factorial over n minus 2 factorial is equal to 30. Does this question look at all familiar? Yes. Yeah, we just did this in that previous page, right? So I can go n times n minus 1 times n minus 2 factorial cancels the n minus 2 factorial. I've got n squared minus n minus 30 equals 0, and then factor that out. n was either? n minus 6, or, and then n plus 5 equals 0. So we know that n has to equal 6. It cannot equal 5, because, or sorry, negative 5, because we need a positive number. Okay, and then this one here, same idea. So we've got n factorial over n minus 3 factorial equals 120. n times n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3 factorial those cancel, that's equal to 120. So here we're looking for three consecutive numbers that multiply and give us 120, sorry, yeah, 120. So what does that equal? We could have six times 
5 times 4, that equals 120. So what is n? So n is equal to 6. All right. So you've got this. This is what we're trying to solve. We're looking for three consecutive numbers that multiply to give us 120. What we're looking for is we're looking for n, right? So if I have n as 6, then n minus 1 is 5, n minus 2 is 4, but I'm solving for n. So the only solution that I need to state is the number I started with, which is 6, which is n. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. You know, if you want to multiply it out, you're going to end up with a cubic polynomial, and then you're going to use your wits and your memory to think back to what we did using the factor theorem and stuff, right? Okay, so you can do that if you want, or you could just think it through that way. Now the last question here before the homework. If you have 12 basketball players and seven must be arranged on the bench, how many ways can you arrange the players on the bench? Okay, so this is 12P7. 12 factorial over 12 minus 7 factorial equals 12 factorial over 5 factorial. So that's 12 times 11 times 10 times, oh boy, this is getting, I, I'm having trouble keeping track of the numbers that I'm actually doing, right? And so there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way to do this. It equals 3991680. Find the function in your calculator that will actually do this. So here, wait, wrong calculator. Sorry. Uh, let's see. Maybe it's in my probability section. Hey, can you guys see it? Right here. Okay, so how are we going to use that? Put the number that you want in the front. 12. Math. Let's find that function again. That's the second one. And then 7. So that gives me that same number, which was a heck of a lot easier than writing it out and then typing in all those numbers in your calculator. Okay? Sound good? Okay. So. Everyone's calculator is different, so we're going to have to find those buttons. But here's your homework. What do you need to do with your homework? You need to make it happen. Okay. Peace out.